Hey everybody, it's Angel from Halo Inspirations. We give you inspirations to help you spread beauty and joy in your quilting journey. Hey, happy hump day. Whoop whoop. Happy hump day to you. And this is our second Christmas Wednesday. We're doing, we did one in September. We'll do this one for October, one in November, and two for December. So looking forward to the future and I'm looking forward today. This one's a little different. I will tell you I ended up splitting it into two uh, weeks, okay, because there's a lot of information and I just didn't want to throw it to you all at once. If you are new here, welcome. We are almost a thousand strong uh, and, and I look forward to the day that we hit a thousand. That'll be a landmark for us. So I welcome all of you who are new. And if this is the first time you're seeing this, go ahead and hit the subscribe bell if you like what you see and give it, um, a, hit the notification after that, the little bell there, ting. Uh, and that will, um, let you know when our videos do upload. Normally they're once uh, on Wednesdays, once a week on Wednesdays, normally, every now and again, it's something different. Um, but normally it's on Wednesday, once a week there. And usually it's at 11, but sometimes I'm later, like today. And, um, but never before 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, my time. So you can kind of start to look forward to that. But of course, if you hit that notification bell, you should be notified when it does finally go up. Okay. And if you've been around and you've, you know, you've been here since the beginning or any time in between the beginning and now, and this is not your first rodeo with us, I want to say thank you for all your support we do truly appreciate it. Okay, so today is Christmas Wednesday. I did allude to the fact that we are going to do something a little different and I'm spreading this out into two weeks. All right, what are we doing? Well, we're gonna take this absolutely darling panel. It's Gnome Antics. It's a Wilmington Prince line by Jennifer Pugh. I hope I'm saying her name right. That's P-U-G-H. I hope I'm saying it right. Okay, we're gonna take this panel and we're gonna turn it into a small quilt. Now I'm doing something just a little bit different. Now I've had people ask um, several times now if I would do some things with some panels. And so that's where this inspiration came from was the idea um, for you to do something with some panels. I will say this is a tad bit different. I hope that you enjoy it as much as I am, but what we are going to do is turn this into a small rag quilt. Yes. Taking it just a tad bit different to this panel. So it will finish at 40, about 42 by 49. So it is not a huge thing whatsoever. You can always make it bigger by adding more borders. Of course, that'll take more fabric, right? Um, however, that's about, I think, where it will finish at, if my math is correct. I do know that my math is correct for the yardage. So let's talk about what you'll need. So you'll need this panel if you're doing what I'm doing. Now you'll notice there are two um, long and skinny ones and there are four squares, okay? And we're gonna use one of the tall ones and for all four of the squares. So you'll have one of these left, one of the um, taller ones left over. And I'll probably turn mine into a wall hanging or something of that nature. But we are gonna use one of them and four of the squares. So you need the panel. You'll also, I used this darling fabric, same line. It's a gnome toss. And I have this particular color on our website. It is considered light gray, but I'll be honest with you, I, I still struggle with it being light gray. Every now and again, I can see it, but it looks more um, beige to me, okay? But they're calling it light gray. So you will need three and a half yards for this. Now, part of it's being used on the front and it's being all used on the back. Okay, so that's why there's so much yardage on it, but it's three and a half yards will get you everything that you need. You will also need a five inch square pack. They are um, actually called 
five karat crystals. It's also the same line, which is again, Gnome Ant Antics, Wilmington Prince. It's carat crystals is what they call there. So um, you'll need a five inch square pack. We're gonna use 20 of these. And then I also used some black Kona and Jet Black Premium is what I have in the shop. And I used a yard of that. So, oh, and of course it's a rag quilt guys. So you know what else you're gonna need? You're gonna need um, some kind of a batting cause it's rag quilts are kind of like a quilt as you go kind of thing. The one thing that is so different is the seams are on the outside opposed to being hidden on the inside and we rag them up and you quilt it as you go, okay? So you'll need a batting. And I use flannel when I do rag quilts. I like it better. I like how it um, rags. I like that it doesn't disintegrate as fast because some people do like to use batting. You can use batting, that is absolutely 100% okay, but I chose to use flannel. And as far as that flannel goes, you'll need two and three quarter yard. So I round it to three yards, right? But two and three quarter yard, um, yeah. And so you'll need that. So we've got the five inch square pack, okay? The panel from Nomadics or something similar, as long as the sizes are the same, because I'm gonna give you the math as we go. And then for the backing and some of the front, we will use the Gnome Toss of Gnome Antics, three and a half yards, and your flannel, yeah, of three yards or two and three quarter. But, and I hope I said three and a half yards for the Gnome Toss. I <laughs> gotta go watch the video again. Anyway, <clears throat> so that's what we're gonna need. A video game will complete. Okay, so before I bring you in, what I want to explain, every time we cut something, you're always gonna need a piece of flannel that matches the same size and a piece of backing. No matter what you're doing on the front, those are the things that you're going to have to take into consideration. The first thing that we're going to do is we are going to choose one of your long skinny ones, okay? The vertical one. Now, I don't remember exactly um, how big this measures out. What I did was I cut with scissors, nothing crazy, but I tried to stay down the middle of the borders. So I cut these out and then I of course cut each square out, okay? Now, the tall skinny one, I ended up taking my rotary cutter and my rulers and I ended up doing an eight by 24 inch. I made sure that this was eight by 24 inches. So that also means that you'll need an eight by 24 piece of flannel and an eight by 24 piece of backing, okay? To go along with it. And then we'll put it in a sandwich and then we'll quilt it. And I'm gonna show you that and talking more about that one uh, in the next clip here, just to really get you started. I ended up um, explaining even better when we got down to the border parts and the other parts that you're going to see. Um, but I wanted to, to first tell you, cut the panel up, staying in those borders as best as possible, and then, and then whatever measurement those pieces are, use your ruler and your rotary cutter to nice, to really get a nice uh, finish with it. So it it is actually eight by 24. So eight by 24 guys, what, pick one. I ended up using the ho ho ho, cause I think he's so super cute. And um, of course, eight by 24 backing, eight by 24 flannel, and let's go ahead and get this started. See you guys in just a sec. Okay, so I'm gonna work a, for now from the inside out. This is the center. Now there are two of these. I've chose the one that says ho, ho, ho. Uh, the other one I'll probably turn into a, um, what do we call that, a wall hanging? But this is inside our quilt. One idea that you can do with your 
panels. Super love this. Okay, I went back and forth on exactly what I was going to do. This is a rag quilt, so uh, it's a little different. But as far as this section, it's eight by 24, right? I do have all of the layers already put together here. Make sure everything is nice and straight. And I, I struggled with this a little bit. You can, if you base this well, you can actually go ahead and free motion quilt. There's a lot of ideas in here, guys. You can echo around the words, around the gnome, around the whatever this thing is called, the banner that he's holding. Uh, you could free motion, um, tracing the lines of the snow down here and do some interesting stuff, uh, you know, whether it's a meander or filling in spots. There's so much you can do. You can free motion this inside. I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do some straight line quilting. Now, uh, before we do that, I will tell you, you'll need to pin it so that it at least doesn't shift too much. So I will go ahead and pin uh, all of it across. And I'm going to do straight lines every two inches. This is eight wide, so I'm gonna do two, four, and six and go from there. I am gonna use painter's tape to give me a good reference. Now, this isn't quite two inches, unfortunately. If it was two inches, that'd be great. But what I'm going to do is I'm gonna do the first line. Now, if I had a skinnier one, I'd go ahead and do all three, but I don't have one that's skinnier. So I'm just gonna go ahead, whoop, don't wanna move it too much. We want about two inches. I'm gonna go ahead and rip it. And I will tell you, I'll reuse this piece. Well, <laughs> I will reuse this piece every time and I'll just move it two inches. And if I don't want to remeasure, I can just simply mark two inches here or, you know, that would be two. Oop, I did the wrong one. So you're, you won't be able to see this, but I will. And we'll go back down here. All right, I'm gonna go over here. And I'll go up here. Those are the lines that I will line up my tape with. And I'm just gonna simple do a straight line. I'm trying to make this as easy as possible. It will be a gift, right? The whole idea is to be fast and easy. So we will do a straight line going down this way, straight line going down this way, and a straight line going down this way. So it would be this one, this one, this one, and this one. Man, I can hardly see that already. So I gotta hurry up and get this done. <laughs> so I'm gonna get that, I'm gonna finish pinning, make sure my marks are still visible. And um, minus this one, I won't do that one. And uh, I'll get this quilted, because like I said, we're gonna work from the, this is the center of the rag quilt. So I'm gonna work from the center. For now, I'm gonna build this center block, so I'm gonna walk you with me. And um, yeah, we'll go to the next step. So I'll see you guys in just a sec. Okay, so I wanted to bring you in just for a second because I'm explaining to you that I am using a walking foot through this entire project. We are going through all three layers. We do have the topper, the um, flannel, and the backing, okay? So because I'm going through all three layers, I want to use the walking foot to help the fabric push equally on both top and bottom. And as you will notice, I have pins everywhere and I've, I think I've kept them out of the way of where I'm stitching, which is a bonus. <laughs> but I'm simply going to do straight lines. It's on, I've, I toyed around with a lot of different ideas, but I wanna keep this so super simple for you guys. Um, like I said, you can add to it. Uh, depending on your creativity level. 
um, or your desire for this quilt if it you know what you're going to do with it and how much energy you want to put into it you can definitely free motion this section you can free motion all of it if you really wanted to but I'm going to do a lot of straight lines in like a regular rag quilt. You will see some X's in the future because that's typically what we see in rag quilting is X's instead of any kind of quilting. They're coming soon. This was just really big and I didn't think an X would be enough. So <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and hold on to my thread. I do have my stitches at um, 2.0 millimeter for its length. You do you, whatever you feel comfortable with, but I'm just gonna simply do one little straight line. And when I'm done with this particular one, I'm using, just so you know, if you haven't watched any of the videos where I've done rag quilting or used tape as a guidance, I'm lining up this area of my um, foot I'm, with this piece of tape, it's going right as best as I can right along here. I am using Dove uh, or Fill Thread 2650 weight. I debated on that one too, and I will switch colors, and I'll talk about that when we get um, further into the quilt. But because I just wanted one straight line, I went with the light on the dark because I prefer to quilt light on dark fabric opposed to dark thread on light fabric. And if you remember this panel, it does change colors. Now I could have switched in between, but like I said, we're making this easy. We're trying to make this simple as possible and have a little fun doing it. And using this um, panel in just a, just a little different, unique way. So after I get this done, this particular line, I will move this same tape to the next two inch mark, which is four inches from here. I'll move it and do the same thing. And then uh, once I get that one done, I'll move it to the six inch mark and again, stitch right down the center of this part of the panel. Eight by 24. And yeah, that's all there is, guys. I just wanted to show you exactly what I was doing. Look, I got to clean it. Look, do y'all see? I got some fuzz here. <laughs> that is not a good thing, just so y'all know. <clears throat> you want to make sure that you aren't getting too much fuzz in there because it can actually cause tension issues and snap your threads. So I'm going to get this done. I'm going to go ahead and give this a little cleanup while I'm here and I'm seeing it. And I'm going to get this uh, panel done and I'll come back at you for the next step. So I'll see you guys in just a second. Okay, as you can see here, I have my straight lines all going across. There's the front. Here is the back. Gotta love these gnomes. Isn't that just the sweetest? Love this nomadics. Okay, so now I'm going to build the border of which it go that goes around this. Now remember this is eight by 24. So each one has three layers. It's kind of like a quilt as you go, like we talked about. This is my top. I'm gonna do it in the Kona black, okay? And that really doesn't have like a right side or a wrong side, so it really doesn't matter. If it was a right side, then you'd wanna make sure that it's facing if you're going to put it down first, it's facing, the pretty side's facing down. Then you're going to take, and this is um, 24 inches, which is the length of the um, panel. And it's three and a half inches wide. So we have 24 by three and a half. Then you take right side facing down. Then we have our piece of flannel, which is our quote unquote batting which I think will show very nicely. And you'll do that for both of them. Also a uh, 24 by three and a half inches. And then we have our backing. And this time the backing will go right side facing up. Okay. So basically what we have are two right sides are facing outward. Okay, and I'm very simply just going to uh, sew one straight line. You could do an X 
this would be a lot of fun at 24 inches so I think a straight line would be easier and I'm just trying to make this fast and friendly so I'm just going to do one straight line down the middle and then we do the once we have these on so I'm going to go ahead and prep the other sides okay this is a three and a half by 13 and again your right side faces towards the table and 13 by three and a half piece of flannel that goes in between your sandwich all right and then of course your backing three and a half by 13 also and I'm just going to simply do and this would be a little easier to do an X but I think just to keep it consistent I'm just going to go ahead and sew right down the middle that is a total preference you can do whatever you your heart desires normally you'll see X's and we will do X's um, eventually but for right now I'm just trying to keep this short and sweet so one down the middle this is 24 by three and a half for the sides and 13 by three and a half for the top and bottom of the border and again your right sides are facing out if you have two right sides okay and we'll see more of that later also but I'm going to get this done I'm going to do it off camera and I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you how to put the border on because rag quilts are just a tiny bit different because of the fact that number one we are basically quilting as we go and number two we want those seams exposed so I'm going to get this off camera done and I'll bring you back when they're finished and we'll go ahead and I'll show you how to attach them to your quilt uh, your panel and then we'll also get started on the next step so I'll see you guys in just a sec okay this is going to be just a bit of a longer stretch of video here so I can give you plenty of instructions so I've got all four of my borders done I've got this done so now we're going to want to sew these together so one of the differences is we put the backing to each other okay instead of the tops to each other so this is my top this is my back we're going to want to place these together and when I take this I'm actually going to go ahead and use clips to hold it together but I'm going to sew a half inch seam right down the middle and what that'll do is it'll make that seam on the front okay so I'm just going to clip these together I'll sew this one half inch down then I'll attach this one and I'll sew a half inch seam down and then we can add the bottom and the top the way the measurements are done it's important that you do the sides first so half inch seam down back sides together half inch seam down back sides to open this up once you have it sewn lay this on top so half inch seam down okay but you have to get the sides on first and then open it up on both sides and put the bottom and the top on and sew those together <clears throat> so that's how we're going to do this side it'll look super cute all right next we talked about sewing squares so here we are or X's in our squares I took from that charm pack 20 of the squares so these are five inch squares from a charm pack you can use scraps or anything that you like now every time I this will be my top there are 20 of these seven for one side seven for the other and three for each top so that's 20 all together so that also means I got to cut 20 flannels for my batting and 20 backs for the backing five inch squares all of them are five inch squares so at least we only have to cut 40. <laughs> okay now again this is my top super cute right we're going to put it face down towards the mat we're going to take a five inch piece of batting and we're going to put it on top now remember five inch squares aren't always five inches sometimes they're a little more sometimes they're a little less so I just try to put it somewhere in the middle so it looks good and then the backing facing up 
and we're just going to line them up and then what I'm going to do is take for each one of these I'm going to take some tape I wish I could find my thinner tape but I don't know where it's at and I'm just going to rip enough to cover the whole corner and I'm going to go across corner to corner now what's important is that you leave the corner exposed so when your needle falls down okay you'll you're stitching in the corner I'm gonna go one direction I'm gonna do about five of these in one direction and I will clip them to hold them together and actually this is the back I don't want to sew the back we want to sew the front it looks a little different so we're just going to line this up there we go I'll go ahead and clip them closed just one on each side will be enough and I'll make five of these at a time and then I'll rip the after the fifth ones in on the four that are exposed I'll rip this off and do five more so I'm going to reuse this tape as much as possible okay so I'm going to do five at a time and I'm just going to sew a diagonal line going corner to corner and a diagonal line going a corner to corner and I am going to chain piece this I'll I'll actually um, have the camera facing me for a little bit of this so you can actually see me chain pacing just in case um, you're a wondering did I do that right I did okay it's just interesting that I have two together so I take we're gonna go backside first then we'll put on the flannel back the back top the backing is going to face the table then your flannel for your middle of your sandwich and then of course your topper now these are just slightly bigger than a five inch square so just be aware of that okay and I'll pin them so again I'll do this to five of them now we're also going to do this to the four corners so if you remember we had four squares in the panel and I think they're 11 and a half inch squared but I cut mine down to 11 inches I've done it to three of them there are four like I talked about let me move this all out of the way so here's one I haven't cut yet I'm gonna go through with you how I did this real quick but you'll need four backings 11 inch squared four middles 11 inch squared okay and then you have I have cut down aren't they cute super love it I've cut down all of these to 11 inches I've got one more that I saved that I'm gonna cut with you all right so I just basically cut them out randomly a pair of scissors didn't go crazy and I'm sorry if there's a glare on here however what I'm doing here is I'm lining up uh, something that looks nice okay now remember I'm working on 11 inch square now I will tell you these um, squares were not cut or printed straight they're kind of wonky that happens a lot that don't be alarmed so what I'm doing is I, I know that five and a half is the middle and I'm just kind of eyeballing and what I've done is I've I'm lining up this five and a half inch mark along his leg going up the center okay now I will tell you I don't know how well you're able to see but I'm coming in on the print which is fine this one is coming in on the print which is fine because a half inch is right here so my hooves of the reindeer are still visible to me and remember this isn't straight so you can go crazy trying to make it straight um, it is what it is you just got to learn to see what looks nice to you and not and I noticed that I've come off a little bit into this beige border but if you'll notice 
my half inch mark is inside the print and this is going to be after I cut there's going to be some of this beige but it's in the seam that we're going to rag so it's not that big of a deal so at this point I kind of like where I'm at I think she looks pretty darn straight so I'm going to go ahead and cut this edge and my microphone of course is not cooperating so normally <laughs> normally I would come all the way over and I'm going to cut this edge hopefully I did that straight nope Yeah, it's going to take me a minute because I'm not holding it right. This microphone is not sitting very straight. I mean, it's coming into your view and I was trying not to do that. And of course, it's stretched. So, but once I get it cut, there we go. Whew, that was painful. See if I can do this different for the next two. So I've got a straight line here and a straight line here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the fabric. I'm going to bring it over just a little bit here. Hopefully you can still see this. Push this out of the way. And I'm going to line up on the 11 inch mark going all the way around. These, these two lines were straight. So I'm lining them up on the 11. And I just took a peek because remember I said about five and a half going up the leg. I think it looks good. So we're going to cut on this side and oh boy here we go and we're going to cut on that side all right and i noticed it wasn't straight i'll probably have to straighten this out when i get off here all right there we go and did I get it? I did. All right. Nope, I'll have to straighten it just a little when I get off here. All right. So that's how I did my 11 inch squares. I did the same all the way. Now you'll notice this is the border, but we're gonna sew into this border. So you won't even know. It'll come right along the inside. So these things will look pretty equal. And then again, we will start with these ones with the backing isn't that so cute this is gonna be darling facing the table i have an 11 inch square of flannel for each one of these squares which again there are four get it nice and straight flannel is sticky cotton likes to stick to flannel quite well so it should stay pretty well and then you put your topper on and again I will sew this um, an X so I will take my I'm trying to find what I did with it okay I will go straight across all the way and then sew the other direction just like the five inch squares only we're doing it on 11 so I'm going to get all of this done. Now I'm going to bring you in. I'm going to go ahead and sew all this stuff together and I'll let you, sh I'll let you see me doing some chain piecing in case you've never seen anybody do it, which I would hardly believe, but some people don't. And, um, maybe they, people talk about it, but they don't actually show themselves doing it. So I'm going to chain piece all of these things together, get everything prepped, chain piece them together, get the, um, borders around the center panel and then we'll come back and talk about the next steps guys as soon as you get through all this it's it's really we're getting real close to being somewhat finished so i will see you guys in just a sec
So once you have all 20 of your squares together, seven of them will go on one side. Okay, and they'll go up and down. And I do have a pattern for this, so I'll have to see what my other side looks like, but you're gonna put these all together going vertically, okay? And when you do this, remember, you want to put back sides together, all right? And then sew your quarter inch seam. Be very careful if you have directional fabric like I do, okay? Because when you flip it, I would put a clip on it to remind yourself which side, because if in fact you sewed this side together, it's going to lay the wrong direction for your quilt. So pay very close attention, but I just simply pick them up just like so, and I sew them together. And it's a half inch seam. Everything in a rag quilt is a half inch seam. So what you'll do, what you'll have by the end of it, we're just putting strips together. You'll need to make two that are seven long. Okay, and notice here are my half inch seams. And if you'll notice this one little piece here, <clears throat> I got my uh, five inch square just a little bit off canter. It's gonna be fine because we're gonna clip them and we're gonna rag it out. So you want seven going, this two of them that are seven long and then two of them that are three long. And these are gonna go on the top and the bottom. The sevens, one will go on one side of the quilt the other go on the other side, and then these ones will be the top and bottom. Same process. Now see, notice, now I wanna tell you, I did have to seam rip one because I didn't pay no attention. So let's say we were sewing these two together. When you pick them up, make sure you're sewing the correct side together because if you pick them up, and sewed this side together, and then you went to open it up, it will in fact lay sideways. And this is my top and my bottom, so it's very important that it does in fact lay the correct way that I want to, okay? So two seven long and two three long. The threes are going on the top and bottom, the sevens are going vertically on your quilt, horizontal, vertical okay so i'll get my last seven done i'm going to make it just the same way so i'm going to use this as a reference when i go to do it all right we also played with 11 inch squares those one are five inch squares and just so you know all of them it's just super cute guys this is just so super cute with these gnomes Okay, so here's the one that I cut out with you. I do in fact have my X sewn. And what you're gonna do is the same thing that we did with the other panel, we're gonna build a border. So, but different measurements. They're still three and a half inch strips, so that's a good thing. But this time, you will have Okay, two, three and a half by 11. Okay, so we put the backing down first. Then we put down the flannel, which is also three and a half by 11. And then one black top. Whoop. Might help if I grab the correct size. That'll be three and a half by 11. So you're gonna make two of these, okay? And I, again, just sewed right down the center. Now feel free to do an X if you so desire, 
but I'm just trying to keep this simple. So I went ahead and just did a uh, line down the middle. Okay. And then the next, so you'll need two of those and they are going to go on your sides. Pull this over here. All right. So you'll need two of those. Well, I'll just lay this out. You're making it the exact same way that we made the other panels borders. This one is a three and a half by 16 inch. You'll have your backing. You'll have your flannel for your batting. And last but not least, you will have your top. Put those on again. I just did a straight line going through. Once you get the shorter sides on three and a half by 11, then you can add the long one of three and a half by 16. Okay. And what that will look like once you're finished and don't forget, I had to rip one of these too because I, I sewed it the wrong way. Your backings go together. It's such a habit to put the right sides together and just make sure you're thinking about it and then sew your half inch seam. And what you'll get <clears throat> are these super darling square borders. Now notice we still have to rag. We're going to get to that at the end. So we have one, two, and I think this one's my favorite <laughs> with the mistletoes. Aren't they just darling? So I have three done. That'll make four. So you'll have four of these. So what, again, for each square, you'll need three and a half by 11, two of those, two backings, two flannels, and two toppers. Because there's four all together, that means you'll need eight if you're going to cut them all at once. And then for the top and the bottom, you will need three and a half by 16, one topper, one flannel, one backing for each. So again, that is a total of eight, three and a half by 16. So I'm going to go ahead and, whoo, I got stuff flying. Finish up my, my uh, reindeer gnome here get him all done okay and i'm going to go ahead and finish my seven and i'll see you guys in just a sec okay so just to recap so far what we have we have a 13 by 29 inch single uh, bordered panel here super cute super love it we have four 16 inch squares okay I just absolutely love this. Now, one thing I did put in words um, inside uh, the where you're watching me chain piece, but I do put my, I'm going to take a picture and throw it up here somewhere where it'll fit. <laughs> I open up my seams before I add on the next layer. And anytime I'm stitching over top of these seams, I do go ahead and open them. And uh, you saw me checking when it hit over the needle plate, uh, just so that I make sure that they don't flip. But I'll take a picture so you can see that. Okay, so they're all like that. Everything um, is, is even on the um, skinny border, I mean the skinny panel. Um, I also did these open before I added the top pieces, okay? So, then we also have three, I'm sorry, <laughs> two strips of three five inch squares with the, I went ahead and pressed the seams open, but you'll have two of these that go horizontal, three of them, all right? So we have two of those, right? And then we also have two seven five inch squares sewn together. And I still need to press these ones open, it seems, but these will go vertical, okay? So seven five inch squares vertically times two. <laughs> so two of those, 
two of the threes that go horizontal, four 16 inch squares and one 13 by 29. Now we have more to go. Lots more. Well, I wouldn't say lots more. We do have some more cutting. I want to remind you that I did put together a list of all of the uh, fabric that you'll need and in the different types of fabric what you will need to cut. It's not a pattern. It just tells you simply a list of everything that you need. So you can kind of check it off, you know. Um, but don't forget to grab that. It is absolutely free and you can find it link down below on my website underneath the inspirations tab so you can find it there you don't have to sign up for anything you just go ahead and click and print i'm telling you guys i'm looking so forward to getting this finished so i will definitely see you next week with part two uh, to get this done this will be fun and I will be on Facebook Live today at 3 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. That's my time here in Virginia of the United States. So I'll be there for our live quilting and answers. Um, we will chit chat some more about what we're doing. And yeah, but that's it, guys. Happy Christmas Wednesday to you. Happy Hump Day. And until next time, may you all continue to be inspired, productive, ever so joyful, never stop believing, and never stop making your dreams in quilting come true. Merry Christmas. See y'all soon.